Okay, hello and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a recording that is unedited, right? So a lot of my previous videos, they're unedited. Um, this is just for you guys to maybe see some stuff that you didn't know. And if you catch this video, it hopefully is going to be a platform for you to look in the description, look at the comments, and find a collection of other tutorials which cover the content that's seen in this video. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, I really make these videos just to give people information and uh, the response lately has been fairly negative just because of things like uh, not editing my videos and so on. So I've, I, for a little while there I've stopped making videos um, and I've only made edited videos but for money. So um, if you want to check out any of my edited videos you can download them off my ArtStation page or on my Gumroad and there's advertisements for them on my previous uploads. But as for my just little rambling video that this is going to be, um, I want to talk about features from Unreal 4.26. So if you don't already, when there's a new Unreal Engine or a new version of software, which is why I have all these blenders down here, um, jump straight into that software and look at the release notes. You don't have to do anything, you know, uh, but if you want to stay ahead and you want to make sure that you know some things um, that could help you out in the future, then just jump in and then some things might stick out to you. Um, for this update, there's been a few updates that I've been waiting for for a long time. Um, so I'm going to mention a few of them that are officially in the default 4.26 now and it's some of the best stuff I mean the one on screen at the moment is your you know the one that you're probably going to see a lot of over the coming weeks which is just the cl new cloud system um, it's an obvious one it's uh, there's, there's a few tutorials there aren't really any tutorials that have been made since the release that I've seen um, maybe that's changed in the last 24 hours, but there's been no videos that I've seen that weren't doing it from before release, from the dev build. Um, and that's sort of the, you know, they're fully volumetric clouds. And uh, there's a ton of settings here and there for different, you know, that the video will go through, but it's worth just exploring and editing settings by yourself. find out whether some of this works for you or not, you know. Uh, but the video that I'm going to link, the one that I followed, uh, doesn't cover one setting, which is just one that's going to help make it a lot visually, much more visually nice, uh, visually pleasing. And that's because the light source actually has settings which you'll need to check. Uh, I mean, automatically, if you place an atmosphere then, with the light source, if I zoom all the way into it, uh, sorry, just to see the clouds, I've got to turn the speed way up, so let's turn that down, zoom back to our light, and the immediate benefit that you'll get from having an atmosphere placed into your world, so sky atmosphere, the new one, one of the fairly new things, is that the lighting will respect the correct colors based on a sun going through the atmosphere of a planet which is really going to help you you know there's no need to physically make that stuff accurate you can just change that in the you can just change it in the in the in the future if you've got some art direction that you want to apply to it then you can do that um but for this it's just, um, you know, it's basically physically accurate, uh, which is very good. But the bit that isn't mentioned in the tutorial is just that you would need to have this sort of stuff on. So that's on by default, I think, atmosphere, sunlight. And then in the tutorial, you've got this kind of look to it, which I thought for a little while, I was like messing around with it and I was like, oh, that looks good. But there's something missing. I kind of want to get the sun 
coming through on the edges and all this sort of stuff. Um, so looking through these settings, you know, some don't, some are more useful than others. I'd go through and tweak some of the things, but it's class, it's casting the cloud shadows, which is going to be the most useful. Um, yeah, I think that's what's going to be the most useful. And uh, I think that makes them look a lot more natural with the shadows. Um, obviously, the cost on these is a little bit more than most things. And then if we go into the actual clouds actor, I can see the volumetric cloud as we go in the material, and it is just fully real time. Uh, you know, the tutorial doesn't cover too much stuff, but the way that you can make things move is just the same as most shaders. Just get a panning texture and uh, these are volumetric textures from Unreal, but uh, you can alter them yourself in different ways. Most likely Houdini. And you can create a moving cloud system, which is which is pretty good. Um, so that link again is in the description and in the comment. Uh, the other thing that I've been waiting for, which has a lot of tutorials uh, related to it, is the layered material system. Um, and previously, if I open up one of these, like the layered master material, all I've got in here is these two nodes. Um, and the way you create that is by saying that uh, the material uses material attributes. And then previously, when they made Paragon, they were using this. They were using a, a system before this, and then they realized, oh, yeah, we want to do a load of stuff with Paragon. So they created um, this layering system, but then obviously they ditched Paragon. And along with it, apparently Fortnite doesn't need uh, this layered system as much, which is surprising because of the amount of variations that they've got in that game for different assets and uh, and players. And it makes it so, so much easier to change colors in this way, in my opinion. But uh, clearly this thing got left by the side and then they've brought it back now to full release and it's it makes your life a lot easier whether it's more expensive or cheaper i'm not sure there was a good talk out on real fest last year from some of the guys that were using it in experimental mode and that's in the released game which is the cycle by by jaeger and they did a good talk and they haven't noticed any issues but hopefully now if you're creating games for consoles you'll be able to use this system uh, is my understanding. So, the difference, you used to have to use one of these uh, 10 layer blends, or you'd use all these layer blends, you know, look at all this ridiculous amount of things that you've got going on here, like whether you want to do all this sort of stuff for basically just making it easier that you can so that you can do things with um, material attributes. And then somewhere in there there's the 10 layer blend. And that was sort of the default. If you go through the Paragon system and you look at all the assets that are in Paragon, they most likely just plug in with this deep by default, which means that they're probably limited by less layers, but the maximum layer that they could possibly do is 10. And I don't think really think you should be doing more than that, but it's just weird to have this big node that uh, you need to have all this stuff on the inside that just does the same thing over and over again. And it just, uh, I don't know, it never, just never seemed quite right. And then the whole material system with functions, if you've ever gone down that rabbit hole, it can take you through, you know, you end up changing one function that's used in a hundred assets and it changes compile shaders for like half an hour you know the sh things go down a deep rabbit hole and i'm not sure whether any of this uh, replaces that but it certainly makes it easier to make changes and slot things in and out where you want and when you want which is uh which is really good so you get one of these new layer nodes so if i type in the layer I scroll down uh, material attribute layers, and then you name it, and I've named it layers. And then from there, you would add your layers with the add elements button. So this works like anything else in Unreal. You can create a preview or default layer system here. 
I've just put a default layer in um, for the bottom so that visually it comes through as what I want it to look like. Um, and other tutorials go over this a lot better and I suggest you look at the Paragon assets to see the advanced workflow for how this would be laid, laid out. Um, but you can just imagine that this is something like a generic three texture input material, with, you know, so it can be metal tiling textures, it can be a generic um, prop material by default, or both, it can still be like an, an uber shader that's like a base. And then past that point you're using mask layers to add details. Uh, which means more texture inputs, but it worked for Paragon, so I'm going to say it's it's very viable. And what you would do is once you've created an instance of this material, you can get access to the layer parameters on the right. Again, other tutorials will go through this in more detail, but the the great thing about that is you've still got access to the the actual instance, so you can still change the colors if you wanted to. And then independently, the new thing is you've got access to blend assets, which can be dynamically swapped out per instance. Um, it will still compile, kind of like a switch, but it just means that you haven't got to have a big uber mask function, um, which is the kind of thing that I would do at the moment. I'd have like a big function that has panning textures and it allows for player position space textures and just all this sort of stuff. Um, just every conceivable scenario done in one instance so that you can switch it on and off with switches, which cause it to recompile and so on. So rather than swapping things on and off with switches, if I was looking at this and I was like, right, well, I actually want this blue to be a panning emissive then I could say, all right, well, let's get our panning mask, drag that in, uh, edit those settings. So I'm getting my panning mask now. So, okay, I've, I've directed this. I want it to be a panning material, and now it is. And then it, also I want it to be a panning emissive material. So straight away, I can grab that and turn it into a panning emissive material. Um, and obviously I've completely changed what I'm doing. From that from what it originally was um but i've not created anything new to do so as in i already have these at my disposal someone's made something like i know that in say a game that i'm making let's say it's a first person shooter every time i shoot someone i want their material to have a new layer that makes them flash red um so i'm shooting them in a first person shooter i'll add the i'll create a gradient which is a, in the materials and textures, you create a material layer blend asset. And you would say, all right, well, I want to make that per person, I want all things to flash red. So on this new layer, which you can name, I'd say uh, damage layer. So then this is my damage that's going to come in. And per instance, I can change out the textures if it's a high quality. Uh, damage system that requires textures per asset um, but overall I'm not having to create these new instances and I don't have to decide what everything has immediately as well I can just add it on as a layer afterwards um, so I, you know that system again is covered in a different tutorial uh, in the description so now Finally, the, the last thing that's really cool is the GPU baking light maps, which I'm not going to do on stream because it might destroy my computer. But it's a plugin that you would get from here. You type in GPU. It says this in the documentation. Uh, I don't think there are really any tutorials for it. It just says in the in the uh, latest update of the documentation. And then at the moment, I couldn't get Bake What You See to work. So maybe that just doesn't work. Um, but you can do a full bake very quickly. You can change your samples. Uh, you know, you've got to turn on a lot of this stuff to, to test what's good and what isn't. Um, the slow mode is a 
a thing that it warns you about right at the top here. So what you're going to want to do is you're always going to want to be in, well, with real time mode off while you bake. And then you hit the build lighting button and in a complex scene, it's just going to build the lighting and do it um, a lot quicker than just your CPU on its own. Um, if you've got an RTX card, specifically this is. Um, so anyone updating to RTX can use that stuff, as well as just general improvements to uh, to RTX features. So I hope that was useful and that you don't mind the way that I've recorded this video. And um, if I see more updates that are really cool, I like sharing this sort of stuff. So I'll see you in the next video and have a good one.